Good morning. One of the most important aspects of Jesus' ministry is what I term his method, M-E-T-H-O-D, his method or his way. How did Jesus go about his mission? For instance, did Jesus use commands or invitations? This has to do with how ministers preach, how teachers teach, how evangelists work with people, and I must tell you how extremely important and crucial this is to our mission of following Jesus. So, our study of Jesus' method must always be in the background of what we are doing for him. For example, in Jesus' healings, what were his methods? I've always been struck by Luke's account of the healing of the ten lepers. The story is told in Luke 17, 11 to 19. What was Jesus' way of healing? Luke tells us that the lepers called out to Jesus, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests, and then... And please note this special way Jesus effects their healing. Luke says, and as they went, they were made clean. Their healing, their cleansing, is done as the direct result of their doing what Jesus told them to do. This is so highly significant and important and crucial to our understanding of Jesus' way. If there were just one instance of this methodology of Jesus, it would be significant. However, in Mark 3, 1 to 6, Mark tells a similar way of healing. The scripture tells us that Jesus, quote, looked around at there, and I think chief priests and square Pharisees, looked around at their hardness of heart and said to the man, that is the man with the withered hand, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, Mark says, and his hand was restored. The faith response on the part of the man and the lepers was instrumental in the healing process. So I keep asking myself, isn't this a clue to the way that Jesus invites us to respond to him? I have used a three-word phrase with people during my counseling and ministry that I hope is in keeping with Jesus' way. The phrase is, will you consider? And that's the title of this writing, will you consider? It is an invitational question, very purposefully invitational. Let me go into another very special passage in the Sermon on the Mount that I believe needs to be examined for another point of Jesus' way. I'm referring to the Beatitudes given in Matthew 5, 3 to 12. The first Beatitudes will suggest the clue that we're looking for. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Remember that we're looking especially at Jesus' method and his way. Jesus does not tell us that God is going to bless us with a poverty of spirit. Jesus clearly shows us his way by stating that the blessing that we need and hopefully desire comes by living out, if you will, daily, the poor in spirit attitude. Am I poor in spirit? Is that a quality that I want? It is if I hear Jesus right. The blessing is the result of our living in a poverty of spirit, if you will. And we look at the rest of the Beatitudes with the same viewpoint and realize what Jesus is telling us about living in a way that invites God's blessing upon our lives. 
those who mourn, those who mourn, those who grieve will receive a very special blessing from God because of their mourning and in their mourning. We will inherit the earth because of a meek or humble attitude in our living. Each of the, of the Beatitudes can be viewed from this same perspective. God's blessing comes as a result of responding to Jesus' invitation to live in a very certain and special way. Let me move you to another feature of Jesus' teaching which follows this invitational concept. Known as the parable of the Good Samaritan, their story is told to answer a lawyer's question about defining a neighbor. Who is my neighbor? Remember, Luke 10, 25 to 37 is the scripture reference. The man encounters robbers and is left for dead. Three different individuals come by, and only the third one stops to help and care for him. You will recall, recall it as the Good Samaritan. Following the telling of the story, Jesus invites the lawyer to discover, hear that word, discover who his neighbor is by self-examination. Jesus doesn't answer the question, the lawyer's question, directly. Jesus allows him to discover the meaning of the term neighbor for himself. I believe that we are meant to examine the teachings, the sermons, the ways of Jesus, so that we can discover for ourselves the Jesus way. Jesus' word is a direct invitation to use our God-given powers and to develop those powers through the gift of the Holy Spirit for the benefit of the kingdom of God. Not for selfish benefit, not for the benefit of ourselves, but for the benefit of the kingdom. Let me remind you as I close my thinking with you this morning of Jesus' mission when he came upon the earth. Here is the way that I see it and state it. Jesus came into the world to bring each and every person into a love and faith relationship with God. That's my tentative definition. May our thinking about Jesus' way empower us to follow him daily as, as our Savior and Lord. Hear his words as invitations to you, respecting your right to choose, to choose, to decide, to follow him daily. May you hear his words as invitations to you, especially to you.